Hi everybody, for fine motor skills today, we've got just plain balloon frames. Um, great for fine motor, for man manipulating, for feeling, strengthening those little hand muscles, but also great for uh, emotional and language development. You can ask these um, what their friends' names, how are they feeling, you can draw different emotions on them, discuss how can we make it feel better, what do you think we can do. So a lot of discussion about emotions would be great with these little friends. And how to make them is you let your children decide what color they want to make the balloons, um, give it a good stretch, attach it to a funnel, I've just used my plain plastic bottle, and then ask the kids to pour some corn flour, plain Messina corn flour in, um, and until it is full, you will see it will, it will fill up quite quickly, and once it is full, you just close it at the top, take it off, Take it off, give it a good tie at the top, and you can either add some hair in, like I have done with some with some wool, or just leave it as is, and then of course draw the little faces on. How is this little purple friend feeling? Happy? Well, let's give them a happy smile, or otherwise they can draw it on and um, encourage them to then look after their little friends, keep them, and, and always discuss how they are feeling. I've used corn flour, but actually you can use any uh, fill in your balloon as long as it doesn't perish the balloon. Sand, rice, um, even something soft like hair gel or stay soft. All of it is different textures and it gives it a different appeal. For our little babies in fine motor, um, trying to get that pincer grip going, I've got just a plain basket here which has got holes in. So you can use any size basket, even big washing baskets. And then putting a whole lot of um, things into the holes that they'll be able to pull out. So I've got some uh, pom-poms, I've got a little bouncy ball, I've got some cotton wool, um, I've got some sponge which I'm going to put in. Obviously you need to be very careful with the little ones that are still mouthing everything. For anything small you need to keep your eye on them all the time. I've got a pool noodle that I can squish and put in. It depends on the size of the holes in your basket to see what you can put in. Um, getting a bit more creative, I've got one of those bendy straws and instead of putting it in that way, I'm going to put it in this way. So if they try and pull it out, it's going to get stuck. It's just helping them to understand that they can pick it up and maybe move it from that side. Depending on the age of your child and how and how they are able to, to think about it all. A little spoon that you can put in, um, even scarves that you can put in and encourage them to pull with both hands, ribbons that you can put in and especially nice long ones that they can pull and pull and pull, pipe cleaners that you can put in and even uh, wind around a little bit so that it becomes a little bit more difficult so that they have to maneuver it uh, more out, straws, whatever it is, it's a matter of keeping them busy and getting those little pincers, pincer grips going. Gross motor skills. Kids love balls and it has got so many benefits, so many skills developed through balls. Uh, body control, eye-hand coordination, foot-eye coordination, stability, balance, directionality, um, hand dominance, body awareness, everything. Ball is an excellent, so grab a ball and let them start um, playing. A, a softer ball and a, a medium-sized ball that they're able to grab is better. A beach ball is even less intimidating for them if they can um, play that. For little ones that are toddlers, uh, that are still just learning how to walk, um, sit on the floor and roll it to them and let it roll it, let them roll it back to you. You can, uh, if they're walking, you can roll it and they need to run after it and catch it, which is giving them some um, uh, stability in their little bodies and movement, visual eye tracking the ball. And then for the older kids, they can throw it. Uh, many kids stand like this when you throw a ball to them. Encourage them to be proactive, use their hands and grab it with all your might rather than just waiting for the ball to come to them. Um, and then encourage them to keep their eye on the ball at all times. It's uh, something that they're going to learn. And when they're throwing, a lot of them are still throwing with two hands, underhand, overhand. And then as they get older, they're using one or the other. Dominant hand dominance comes out when they're playing with balls. You'll be able to see which is their stronger hand. And then when they're kicking, um, they normally also kick with their, with their dominant leg. Um, but not always. Some kids kick with left even though they're right. And of course it's balance. They need to be able to balance to kick a ball 
um, which is excellent. They need to be able to do directions so you can say to them, can you kick it that way, can you kick it that way, can you kick it directly to me? Um, so enjoy, have a, a fun with the ball and um, encourage them to use all of their little skills doing it. Another gross motor activity is using side chalk. It's a cheap way to get kids to use their little bodies. Um, when it's a lovely day, go outside and draw all over the pavement. It washes out so very easily. If you've got different colours, it's even more exciting. Um, let's pretend this is the pavement outside. You can create an obstacle course for them by making a hopscotch. So you are going to encourage them to do hop. Scotch, hopscotch all the way along. If they can, they throw a little token in and then they hopscotch it. They have to fetch it and turn around and jump. Good old hopscotch. You can create lines that they can walk on and balance on. You can create different um, shapes that they need to walk around on. Whatever, whatever. The gross motor is, is excellent, completely free and creative. And let them design their own one if they want to. And then with water play, we're continuing with the chalk. If they are outside, this is great. You give them a little bucket with water and a paintbrush. It can be a nice big one. And encourage them to go and erase all of the lines that they've done. So they are then going to go and all over the pavement go and paint. You can extend it. You can ask them to go and paint all over the garden if it's a lovely sunny day. The jungle gym, the trees, the whatever. You can have a rule about no mud. But even if they want to paint mud, that's awesome. If you're not going outside and you've done the chalk inside, you just give them a small one and you ask them to erase it. So let them um, erase, go over all the lines on the chalk. Excellent for pattern, excellent for pre-writing skills. For sensory play, I'm going to give you the recipe on how to make cloud dough. It's similar to a play dough, but it's just a little bit of a different texture and wonderful to play with, to manipulate, to move all of those little hand muscles and to strengthen it. I just want to share this really cool play-doh. It's called cloud dough. It's oh divine. It's so nice and soft. And it's made from one cup of conditioner. This is just a cheap Diskim conditioner. And um, two and a half cups of corn flour. And you just mush it in a bit until it becomes grainy. Um, if it's too sticky, just add a little bit more corn flour. But it's so divine and it smells beautiful and it makes your hands feel so soft. You can add litter or color um, or anything else, but it's just divine as it is. A sensory bin doesn't have to just be textures. It can be anything to do with senses, uh, smelling and even hearing. Here I've got a whole lot of items that can make a sound. It's awesome. Put them all in a tub. Find anything around the house that can make a noise. Um, here I've got my big bell. I've got little bells, shaker bells. I've got those cheap things from the crazy store that makes crazy sounds. Um, my own shaker that I've made from a toilet roll. We've got whistles of all sorts. We have got rain makers, even portable doorbells that go ding dong when you've got batteries in it, and alarm clocks that can they can listen to the different alarms. Awesome, let them explore all of the different sounds. For art, I've got my three primary colours, red, blue and yellow, and today I want them to go and paint the handprints. Um, it's excellent for, for them to be able to do this, so painting one hand crossing midline, let them let them paint with their dominant hand onto their non-dominant hand. If they are a little bit older, they can use swap the hands because that's also great. Um, encourage them to paint all of the little fingers, one, two, three, four, five little fingers and the palm, and then go and stamp it. They can paint your hand, they can paint their hand, they can paint um, just the different colours, um, having a lot of fun. And then, of course, it's all about mixing colors to see what colors we can make. So they've painted their one hand red, and you can paint the other hand yellow, um, and then get them to rub their hands together and to see what color we're going to make. And, of course, stamp it, stamp it, stamp it, and we've made orange. And then you encourage them to paint the one hand yellow, and put a few drops of blue on the other hand and once again rub 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 oh, and what have we found green and of course stamp your green all over the place
then try with some blue let them paint some blue and you paint the other hand red and what are we going to get when we when we rub our red and our blue hands together what color are we going to make and let's see wow purple and then of course the great way of another way of doing this is that you paint your hand or they paint your hand one color and you paint their hand another color and then you've got to rub your hands together and then make a print that's just getting you involved as well enjoy